Okay, so we are on the next page and these are the first two problems. And when you look at them, it's all about the transformations of the basic functions. So the first thing you have to be able to identify is what does this graph most likely resemble? So the basic function that it most likely resembles is y equals one over x squared. And you have to know that. And I'll tell you out loud, that picture looks like a volcano. So we go back to our regular routine of first figuring out what the critical point is. That procedure never changes. To find the x coordinate, all you do is set the x part equal to zero. When you add five to both sides, you get x equals five. And when it comes to figuring out the y coordinate of the critical point, all you have to do is go for the outside number. But the outside number is positive two. So when you're ready, you draw your small coordinate grid, make sure that you label the x, and make sure that you label the y, and make sure you put in the point five across and up two. Only that point needs to be labeled. Now, be consistent. I, from now on, want to see a dotted line going through that critical point vertically and another dotted line going through that critical point horizontally. I had told you that 1 over x squared looks like a volcano. So if you're wondering on how to draw that, it looks like this. There's one of them. And there is the other one and that's what your picture looks like now what is the challenge the challenge is for you to pick out the domain and the range so when you want to pick out the domain it's all the x values that are used so I guess 0 is used I guess negative 1 is used I guess negative 2 is used I guess 1 is used I guess 2 is used but actually the number five is not used because that's a vertical asymptote. And the number five is the only value of X that is not used because that's the vertical asymptote. So your job is to skip over the number five. So it's negative infinity to the number five, skip over the number five, and then go all the way out to infinity. This means that every value of X is on the graph except for x is 5 because that's where the vertical asymptote is. And when it comes to the range, when you look at your picture, your volcano sits completely above that orange dotted line. The orange dotted line has a y height of 2. So if you're completely above that, then your range is above 2 and it keeps going up and up and up. And that's what the domain and the range look like. Now, when you look at the second example next to that, you will notice that you have a different function. Your function has absolute value bars in it. So when you are going for, hey, what's that basic function? You have to know that the picture that you're going to draw most likely resembles the picture of y equals the absolute value of x. And at this point, you should know that the absolute value of x when it is graphed looks like the letter V. So going for my critical point, which is what I need to do before I draw the graph of this function, to figure out the x coordinate, you take the x part and you set it equal to zero and you solve. But if you subtract two from both sides, you end up with x is negative 2. When it comes to the y coordinate, you're always going for the outside number. And when you look at the equation given, the outside number is positive 1. Now I'm ready to draw the graph of this. When you draw the graph of this function, please make sure that you label the x-axis and you label the y-axis. And not only do you label those, but you always label the critical point, negative 2, up 1. 
I do expect to see those dotted lines that go through the critical point vertically and also horizontally. Now, you're supposed to know that an absolute value function looks like the letter V, but this time if there's a negative sign in front of the basic function identifier, it means reflect your V, because here's a V, over the horizontal dotted line. So actually, your V is positioned like this. Now, parabolas are U-shapes, and absolute value are V-shapes. Both parabolas and absolute values always have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity because they both spread out forever left to right. But when it comes to the range, this upside down V falls below this horizontal dotted line that has a height of, remember it's the Y coordinate, of one unit. But there is a point at one unit and it's completely below. So when you do the range, you can't say from one down because you can't put negative infinity on the right. You have to say from negative infinity to positive one, but you're including positive one because there's actually a dot on a height of positive one. Okay, the next two questions on this page, you're looking at two different types of basic functions. So with this type of basic function that you have, we have f of x is equal to, it's called the greatest integer function of x minus 4, and then after it, it says minus 1, whereas the other one is f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 4. So at this point, we're going for the basic functions. And most people are not familiar with the greatest integer function. But I hope you can kind of resemble and see that, see the um, similarities that the basic function is just this. I'm going directly to the critical value before I give any other explanation to find the critical value of any function, or critical point, I'll call it, you need to give me the point, which is the x coordinate and the y. To figure out the x, you take the x part, you set it equal to zero, and solve. But when you add four to both sides, you get x equals four. And when you wanna find the y coordinate, you just take the outside number. And in this particular problem, the outside number is negative one. So at this moment, I'm gonna draw my coordinate grid. I'm gonna label the x-axis and I'm going to label the y-axis. And I'm also going to label where the critical point is, four across and down one. That's the only point that needs to be labeled. When you are ready, we're going for a dotted line through the critical point and a dotted line through the critical point horizontally also. Now, the greatest integer function. So what does that look like? Well, you start at the critical point, you draw a horizontal line that's one unit in length and you put an open circle. And then you jump one unit up, put a solid dot, a horizontal line that's one unit in length and put an open circle and then you jump a solid dot, a horizontal line that's one unit in length, put an open circle, and you jump. A solid dot, a horizontal line, and then you put an open circle. And it goes on and on and on and on. It even goes down too. It's like a floating staircase. The domain for a floating staircase actually is always negative infinity to positive infinity because each of these steps interlock with the other one and it covers the whole span from left to right. But when it comes to the range, there's gaps 
in the problem. This graph in purple does not appear in this intersection, nor does it appear in this intersection or this one or any of the intersections. So the range of this is only the integers. That's the only one that's quite weird. All right, so we are now on the next picture. And I have this graph for you, and you have to know what the basic function is. And your basic function for this graph is just y equals 1 over x. So it's kind of like already in the problem. There's no real big adjustments on that. But when you go for your critical points, and the reason why I gave you one that actually looks like this is because when you want to find the x coordinate of the critical point, you take the x part and you set it equal to zero. But there is no work to be done. x is zero. And when it comes for the y coordinate, you're just going to go with the outside number. So when you go with the outside number, you're going with negative 4. Once you have established what the critical point is, you then draw your coordinate grid. Here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis. Make sure you label both of the axes and plot the critical point. Now remember, when it has zeros, people mess up all the time. Remember, it's the y that's negative 4. So go to the y, go to negative four, and this is where zero, negative four is. I do want you to always put a dotted vertical line through the critical points, and I want you to always put a dotted horizontal line through the critical points before you start drawing. Now, what does this picture look like? This picture, some people call it a butterfly. It actually kind of looks like the part of the volcano over here, the way I drew it before. But instead of drawing the other piece next to it to look like a volcano, you draw it over here. And some people say if you turn your head a little sideways, it kind of looks like a butterfly. Now, this graph has two separate sections. There's a section on the left and a section on the right. Together, they make the 1 over x function. However, the domain, you're missing that center line. So you're missing an x value of zero. So your domain goes from negative infinity to the number zero, but it jumps over the number zero and it goes all the way out to infinity. And your range, it's also two separate sections. You got the piece on the bottom and the piece on the top. The only thing you don't have is they're separated by this horizontal line that has a y value of negative four. So when you do the range, you have negative infinity to negative four. That's the separation marker, so you have to jump over negative four, and you gotta go all the way up to infinity. And that takes care of the front side of that ditto.